Facing challenges and overcoming setbacks is part of doing business. Whether you have the expertise to survive them or not could mean the difference between success or failure. Welcome to We Are Women, featuring revealing conversations that provide invaluable insights into the success secrets of female masterminds. A must listen for every entrepreneurial woman. Now here's your host, Janine Vosper. Hi, it's Janine Bosper here and welcome to this episode of the We Are Women podcast. I have the beautiful and talented Martha Mock with me today and she is an industry recognized confidence business coach with a global presence, an international entrepreneur and founder of the Super Confidence Coaching, specializing in empowering businesswomen to reach their full potential through confidence and achieving a balance between business, life and relationships. She is recognized in the top 1% of all women's confidence mindset and business coaches in Australia, an international motivational speaker, an author of six ebooks and one co-authored published book, and a master practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming, or NLP as those in the industry know it as. I am so... Confidence is such a thing that I've always had been passionate about. I know Martha and I, we are going to have a great conversation today. Welcome and uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me today. Confidence, you know, that's how people say, I step out of the comfort zone and all build confidence. And it's not as easy for people who who don't feel that level of confidence and self-worth in themselves, is it? I feel like there are a lot of people pe- uh, put a lot of pressure on the word confidence. They keep thinking that I need to achieve a certain level before I can name myself having the confidence. For me, I see it in a different light. I see confident as just being yourself, even as the imperfect you at the moment, and still being able to smile about it and be okay with it. And having that minimum bar set, it helps all of us to realize hey being confident is not as hard as what we think yeah it, that look, that's easily said isn't it but for people who don't feel that level of self-belief and self-worth mm. it is really tricky to say hey um you're not perfect we're not perfect nobody's perfect now be confident you know it's it's a trick, isn't it? It's not a trick. It's it's a it's a difficult step into into that space. Just thinking about why are you know, have you ever thought about this? Why are pe- some people just they've got confidence and belief and they you know, go up, push ahead and do everything that they want to achieve, and other people are held back because of their beliefs? Is is this something that you've ever done that sort of gone? Oh, I need to look at that and figure out why that is so. I think that it comes from a lot of our old traumas that we have. A lot of people think about as the word trauma. They think that, or oh, someone stepped on them, or they have gone for bullying, or or, or the harassment that they go for. But not realizing trauma can be as simple as you give someone a lolly when you were young, but you were rejected. That could cause a dim in your emotion. And based on that emotional experience, you related to confidence in yourself or and also relating it to fear and also rejection. So all of those experiences that you did not go so well have caused you this fear of not being able to express yourself properly. So at the end of the day, what is confidence? Confidence is just about being able to speak up and do it with respect. A lot of people mistaken confidence and being rude or egotistic. A lot of, especially I find that a lot of career women, when they think that, oh, I have confidence in myself, the first sentence they relate to is, I'm going to be a bitch. Everyone will think that I'm like egotistic and I will be this horrible person in the office. But instead, having confidence is about having that strong belief in what your boundary is. And boundary have a lot of different level and everybody is different. Mm. So by finding what is your boundary, by knowing what do you want, that helps to build up our confidence. Yeah, that's really interesting that, and that 
um, being a, a bitch is often mm. a perception from other people more so, yep. as well as, well, people, you know, I, I find this when I work with clients and yep. they'll go, I, I don't want to, I don't want to come across as a bitch and I don't want to, yep. don't want to be really f- feeling like I'm aggressive or, yes. and, and, and that, there's, so there's that space they hold on to, to themselves mm. and that's look it's very much to do a lot of do, do a lot of personality profiling as well and it's yes. a, a lot to do with the in, individual person mm. but it's that confidence to set boundaries just on a, a, a anecdote I was at a business meeting yesterday morning and they put out the breakfast and I was standing grabbing a cup of tea as uh, the owner of the cafe came out and I, I looked up the meals and they, they were mostly wraps and 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 not not yeah. nothing was appetizing yeah. <laughs> and i said to as he came out and i said look i won't be able to eat any of that and he's looked at me and looked at the food that had been laid out for the other 40 people and he said can i get you a couple of poached eggs and i said that will be perfect thank you now, everyone else is watching me eat my poached eggs which i thoroughly yeah. enjoyed and, and was very mm-hmm. thankful for but it's that speaking up and doing it in a in a way that you end up getting. My husband always goes, oh, I can't believe that those people are doing that for you. You got that result or you got that discount or you got the best camping spot or whatever it is. And it's just recognising that you need to ask for things if exactly, you want them, Anna. don't you? I completely hear you on that point. Being an Asian culture as well, we've been told that we should be the woman that shut up, put our head down, be the wife, be the sister, be the daughter that the society and our families expect us to be. And it is all of those thinking that is actually keeping us trapped. All of those beliefs that other people have, have embraced it on us and we thought, that was the only way to go. Mm. And I was one of them. And if I'm going to share with everyone today, I'm actually an introvert. I'm not an extrovert. And people think, wait, really? Martha is an introvert? I am. I could stay at home all day. I could go to a movie by myself without talking to anyone. I don't need holding hands to go to the toilet. That sort of stuff. I don't need it. Mm. I'm very, very happy being in my own space. But in saying that, it doesn't mean that I don't uh, and I can't work with other people. A lot of people think that uh, a woman, especially being confident, we get um, this label of, oh, she's demanding, she's high maintenance. We felt looking at it in another way that I look at myself as I have requirements. I, I don't have expectation because expectation is another thing, but I have boundaries, requirement and standards. So as long as I uphold myself of what I want and also expressing myself with respect to the other person, why not? <laughs> Yeah, a, a, a lot of interesting points in that, particularly the from your heritage. Mm-hmm. Now, just even reading books and what, what the read the books and watch the movie movies, the crazy rich Asians in the yes. Singapore is, and you know it's a movie, it's a book, but the books are actually written by somebody that lived the lifestyle. You know that yeah. was their books, and and they produced the movies. And it was that expectation of you have to do what is expected. You can't go against the family name and you will behave a certain way. Now, I know it's not just Asians. Again, I was just reading a a novel, a a fiction novel, but it was based about upper class in Boston or perceived older families in Boston. Very much the same thing. People Mm. felt that they didn't have the choice own choice to speak up Mm. and tell how they wanted things to be until something major changed and then they had the opportunity to realize that needed to be done so is that sometimes have you noticed with some of your clients that sometimes they need to have something a big catalyst come along that they then go this isn't acceptable so that i that i keep responding in this way and be subservient or agreeable without any boundaries I hear they you switch because, yeah the thing the funny thing is being a human we normally don't go and fix the things until it causes us a major pain or major issue 
isn't mm -hmm. it? Even that we're looking at that picture, it's a little bit crooked. But until the day that you need to take a photo and put it on social media, you won't even go and walk over there and just turn that little angle a bit. Oh, That's human nature. I do, but you know, I, get what, I get the analogy. <laughs> no, I'm looking at my camera going, it's slightly yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, slightly off, exactly. So uh, it, we do have that issues like that, that until it becomes a pain or a hurt for us, we don't go and fix it. And a lot of career women, especially, they will experience that when they're trying to move up the ladder in what they're doing, because they finally realize what is the difference of having authority or being everyone's friend. When you've been everyone's friend, you're not really being respected. You're getting over taken advantage of in a lot of time just because you are that nice person. But inside of us, we get our like it's like a doormat that we get people to keep stepping on top of us and thinking that as long as I be this nice person, I'll be okay. And I can bet you, this is from my personal experience, that someone in your life have told you if you don't shine bright enough, you will be safe. You are a lot safer when mm. you're not shining because you won't become a target. All of those thinking, all of those safety issues that other people have put on you, you believe it to be true. So when the one day you need to go and fight for that position that you want, the promotion that you want, instead of being the person that you can be, you try to be this nice person and let all the other people speak first. And that can contribute to your internal success and also your confidence building as well. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying that you constantly need to speak up. You constantly need to be talking over other people on their top. But it's about realizing that, hey, you know what? You can ask for a time to speak up. You can ask for a space for you to shine. And you are the first one who must believe that you have the quality to do it. I love that terminology, ask for a space to shine. Mm. Yeah, that is, and that's exactly what it is, asking for that opportunity and mm. whether if, if that involves, uh, I've set this boundary now, I ask, yeah, I, I really love the way that you have, have termed that. And I, I had never thought about it until you said it, that people may have been told that, don't shine too bright because that will draw attention to you. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm fortunate that wasn't part of my uh, reality. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it is and I just don't hear it. Ugh, just ignore it. Go off my own little journey, doing my own little things. You know? yeah. But uh, as, a, as a child, I don't remember it being mm -hmm. a thing. So I think that's, that's a very good uh, uh, an example of a belief but then pulls you back. A belief that becomes a value then pulls you yes. back, doesn't it? Mm. And the funny thing is it comes from love. Your parents mm. love you so much. Oh, don't walk too fast. Oh, she will fall. All that little thing are protecting you. And because you saw how other people used to protect them, you do exactly the same to your own children and the children, your grandchildren, et cetera, et cetera. So that belief has been carried on a long, long time. Like for me, myself, after my, my last marriage, I'm now with a Caucasian guy. Trust me, the culture shock, it was actually very interesting. <laughs> I, I'm looking at her, like his daughter, and then I'm like, oh, was she four? Like, was she hurt herself? They, they didn't care. They just let them explore. And then I'm like, you know what? That's actually a good thing. As long as that they don't kill themselves, it's actually okay to let them explore and experience life. Yes, we love to protect the people we love. We love to protect everyone around us because we are a good person and a kind person. But sometimes I have to realize at some moment, is it me being controlling or am I actually trying to put my expectation on that person? okay now i need to wind myself back and let them have the space to grow up let them have the space to make their own journey mm -hmm. and that is just respect and that ability to face challenges have the capacity to face challenges because they face challenges yes. if we don't give i was having a conversation with a client earlier and it, we, we revolved around this because he's hired a lot of younger people to work in his mm -hmm. business and he's finding that he 
that they haven't necessarily developed a, and it's a very generalization, they haven't yeah. developed the problem solving capacity because mm -hmm. they've, and these, these are from country kids. So there's not as yeah. much as it is from, uh, from urban, the, yeah. the hovering parents mm -hmm. and trying to protect them from everything. And in yeah. fact, what it is, it's dis, disarming them. So they don't have the capacity to have the, the forthright and the abilities to face those challenges and have the ability to work out how to solve problems. And then when they do that, you build that level of re resilience and the next level of resilience and the next level of resilience. And I was talking about mm -hmm. it because my sons are in their 30s now and it, it was very much, oh, we're going to ride our push bikes. Um be back at six. Don't worry about it. You know, and I am positive they got into trouble while yeah. they're out riding the push bikes. <laughs> I'm positive they went places where I said, don't go down by the creek. Yeah. I'm positive. I went, I did exactly the same thing. Yeah. But what they, and I'm hearing stories now, you know, as they've got their own children as, as to what they did. But it built up this incredible ability to have the capacity to solve problems and to be very resilient even when a lot of stuff comes at them. And that's what and, and when you've got that resilience, you have got confidence, haven't you? That you then can face anything because you know you and yourself and you can trust yourself. Yes. And I think being a parent and being like, I, I'm a step parent, so I don't have my own kids, but doesn't mean that I love people anything less. But being that in that emotion and being a woman as well, having our, our hormone, we are, are such a protector in many sense. We mm. like to protect things. We don't like to see things hurt. We don't like to see things harm. But in saying that is I have to come back into myself and asking, am I being controlling or am I allowing people to grow? That is the big key mm. that I find that it helped me realize what I might do. Because as a woman, uh, I remember back in the days when my partner told me, wow, you're quite controlling. I'm like, <laughs> you're I've been controlling. told that more than once too, Martha. <laughs> oh, well, and then you, like, you start to begin really, really defensive. But then when I come down and actually have a look at him and say, oh, the fact that he's telling me I'm controlling is not been a negative way. Mm -hmm. He's actually telling me that I need to give them space to grow so mm -hmm. they can be a stronger person. Because remember, back into our days, we didn't get as much uh, love and cuddling and, and all the protection. Like even you, why I push right now, you've got covers everywhere that you can buy. Back in our days, no, like you get a scrape, you get a scrape. But what would that made us this stronger mm -hmm. person? Mm -hmm. I was just in a dental surgery earlier and, and, and I heard that the receptionist said, yeah, yesterday the girl came in her first day, uh, actually walked out by lunchtime <laughs> because they couldn't follow the company uh, procedure in, in cleaning. Uh, it's a dental surgery, so the, the standards are high. But you can see how it was uh, not irresponsible is that young people have lost that resistance into mm -hmm. how to deal with problem solving, how to deal with their emotion, how to express and ask for what they want, because they never have to ask for more than once now. Mm -hmm. They just need to ask their parent and the parents will give it to them. Yeah, it's, and we're generalizing here, but I've been, you know, working in a space with uh, group hire company and working with apprentices yes. and traineeships trainees and talking to clients who employ young younger people and it's it's not it's not their fault mm. it's their parents fault for yes. disarming them and disempowering them yeah. and, and by not allowing them to and then unfortunately when they do get that opportunity to break free they don't make the best choices where yes. a choice that a 11 year old might make while he's riding his push bike out around the bush mm -hmm. is very different than what a you know 18 year old might make in his car with a few exactly. mates yeah I, yeah I hear you there definitely especially like I I started working since the age of 13 because I feel like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I started working selling pictures at the market. That was when I actually started my career journey. So it helped me to develop this sense of being a lot more mature than my age. Mm. It helps me a lot in that sense. Doesn't mean my parent doesn't love me or anything. 
it just means that I have the opportunity to go and and explore different things. And I'm grateful for them because by the age of 21, I already got married and I experienced that at 19 years of beauty. Me too. Marriage. There you go. So, <laughs> like, you know, that's what you do when you're young and, and silly at, at 21. Oh, I'm, still, like, I'm still there 43 years later. <laughs> yeah. It's like fun, like, you know, because I was being bullied at such a young age, what I was looking for was someone to love me and take care of me and look yeah. after me. Not in the sense of finances, okay? A lot of women, when they hear the word, especially men as well, oh, taking care of you, so I need to pay for anything. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean that. As a woman, especially a career woman, we are completely capable of looking after ourselves financially. It mm -hmm. is those in uh, values that we cannot buy with money, such as love, care, affection. All of those things is what we crave for as a woman. And, and that's quite internally. The stronger you are on the outside, the more you actually want that support on the inside. That is the truth. And we need to find it from somewhere. And I see a lot of single uh, mom, single parents does it as well because they need that cattle. They need that someone, their reason for them to actually fight harder in their life. So just about finding that balance, I find that it's very, very important in knowing what you want. Like we always come back to it. what is confident is knowing that you may not be good enough, but still give it a go without faking it. That is the difference. I am completely against something like fake it till you make it. Me too. <laughs> yeah, because you can't. You can yeah. only fake it to a certain level until you get discovered. And during that discovery period, you're continuously living in fear. Nothing worse than living in fear. So I rather say, hey, this is the best I am. I will do my best to do it. Not giving you any guarantee, but I can tell you that I will give it 120%. That's being honest. That's being genuine. And that is asking for the permission to make mistake and to grow. Because yeah. mistake making is just a learning path. Yeah, that, that's, uh, and that's interesting. Okay, because all we can do is the best that we can do. Yeah, that, that's such an important factor. And I, when I'm working with people, it's there's no such thing as perfectionist. Yeah. You, you, it, it holds you to a standard that's unachievable. Your yeah. only standard that you can have is to do the best you can possibly do. And yeah. that's the beautiful thing about working with coaches mm -hmm. is that you learn more information so your best becomes better. Yeah, exactly. Perfectionists, I feel, Think a lot of career women will have it. Uh, we are in that standard of expectation from other people, thinking that we need to do better than what they expect us to do. All that constant pressure, you're going to break in one moment. How many people get overwhelmed, burned out? It is because of that ex unrealistic expectation that we put on ourselves thinking other people expect us to do that. Mm. So once we change our concept, knowing what our limit, what our boundaries and what we can do and what are the, ex, uh, the extra side, the extra bubble area, which I call the risk zone, somewhere that you can venture out and step out of your own comfort zone to try it. So you know that you will still be safe. If there's a little bit of risk, yes, you may get a scrape, but you're not going to die. So let's try it and make a difference. So many of us doing exactly the same thing day to day and hoping to get a different result. That's never going to work. We all know that answer, but we still continue to do it. Why? Because change is scary. Yeah, def definitely. that, And there's that's one of the biggest fears that people have. And it's not something they would necessarily externalize but it's de so definitely something that people internalize and that mm -hmm. becomes a stress within their bodies when mm -hmm. when something happens that's that's change in in our, in our lives and i uh, coming back to that I, when i'm teaching people with professional speaking in in particular yeah. or or sales conversations i i'm the same with you you can't fake it I, I, I don't want to work with people who are fakes at what they do. But what I do encourage people is to feel it until they make it. So own that confidence level, own that sense of I've got this covered, even when the you know the wheels and the hamster in the back of the brain is going, no, you haven't, no, you haven't. But, uh, you know, to talk yourself 
into it, but sense of feeling, take the emotion that you want to feel when you go into it. And then when that emotion will continue to build because that's where your your angle of focus is on and not focused on being fearful or am I faking this? Exactly. Imposter syndrome is a, such a beautiful term that I have learned in my journey, knowing that, hey, you know what? You may not think you are perfect, but you have the talent, the experience to be the best version of you. And that's all you have to show out. And when talking about change, we keep thinking that we can have one one little magic wand and we become Cinderella. It doesn't happen in the real life. So what we are looking at is just a three millimeter shift every single day. It's just that little idea of, hey, I'm going to allow information in. Yes, I'm going to accept a new idea. All that three millimeter change is what's going to help you to become the next step, the next person that you want to be. Yes. And again, I was talking with some ladies today, all in my age bracket, who are still you know, enthusiastic distance people out there achieving every day. And we just talked about that when we were 20 or 30 or 40 even, we did not have any concept of the ability and beliefs and the life that we would be living now. It, it's constantly changing. It's, that, that's the, really the only given is other than you know death and what well, they say death and taxes yeah <laughs> is change things are changing and every time you lose you learn something new you change from that mm. instant moment before which is mm. which is incredibly important to realize the other thing you brought up is the comfort zone and i've got this thing where i don't call it a comfort zone i call it a confinement of anxiety Oh, nice. Because every time you, you think you have to take a step out, mm. you want to pull back and that that's, that sense of fear is with you in that comfort zone yep. instead of this anxiety that's there. Mm. And I was listening to someone the other night and they were saying rather than stepping out, just keep pushing the boundaries out wider yeah. and keep making that space bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually you know, it, it becomes this little... It's, it's not a great wall. It's just a, you know, there's something very easy to, and maybe a mark in the sand and very easy to step over. It's true. I was listening to Mel Warburton the other day. She was saying that something which it aligns with me a lot. She said that the excitement, the feeling of excitement and anxiety in your body, it reacts exactly the same. So instead of telling yourself it is an, a scary moment, I have a fear, I'm having like, you know, all that panic attack coming up. Instead, tell yourself, I'm so excited. I just can't wait to believe it. All that kind of thing. Start singing that song. Like, I'm so excited. I can't wait to experience it. All that kind of thing, it will help to change your vibration in yourself as well. As soon as you vibrate differently, the people will accept you differently as well. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point, how the people accepting you. Yeah, that's something I, I use when with the public speaking in particular yeah. is – to get that that sense of excitement, you know, and that I, the people when I work with them, they have to use that mantra as they're going to speak. Mm. I am excited, and using yeah. the intense you know, hand punch as well. I am yeah. excited. It's it, yeah. it's and it does. It changes it up. It it really shifts it. It does. I went, I just came back from a cruise and um, this time is a family cruise. All of us went together, and I love the cover or keep up. I love singing in public. And they keep looking at me as like, you're Asian. Why do you have the confidence to go up and actually <laughs> sing in front of 100 people? And I'm like, I'm just excited to go and share. It doesn't matter how good or bad I sing. Yeah, I'm just yeah. allow a space to voice out, to just express myself. And guess what? After three days, I don't need to know those people anymore. What's the better <laughs> way to go and experience them, isn't it? That's a very good point. Can you sing that? Yeah, I love, I enjoy singing. I love it. So hopefully that I can sing. But I did get people saying that, wow, you got a wonderful voice. you got a great voice. I'm like, oh, that's oh, very nice. kind of you. Thank you. Yeah, so I that's like good. It. But I do prepare. See, when you're not confident about something, this is one really good tip that everyone mm. can try. Practice and practice and more practice. Mm. Practice does help to make it more better for you. 
it's not a perfection. It's never a perfection because when you're presenting, you always have the outside environment uh, that could actually contribute to your performance. However, when you practice long enough, you develop this sense of repetitive muscle that it will just go, it will just mm. share, it will just become better. So the more you do it, the better you get. Yeah, uh, abso absolutely. Uh, that's a great way. Being prepared really does help you. And it, and then you get to the state where you don't have to be even prepared. You yeah. just turn up. But I'm a, in a not-for-profit public speaking club mm -hmm. and, you know, regularly I for, for what to challenge me in delivering speeches or training, yeah. we do, I'm given a an impromptu topic as I'm yeah. walking up to the front of the room to speak and here's my topic and you've got five to eight minutes. And they made it a bit trickier the other night. They gave me three topics. Yeah. Randomly people had given me the three topics, had to weave a speech around those three topics and they were scuba diving I think positive or inspiring life or something was one of them. Mm. And the, the other one was vasectomy. Oh. So I had to weave a speech around those three. And it's just fun, but it's, yes. it's I couldn't have done that 15 years ago, 10 yeah. years ago, even five years ago. Mm, and, and to be able, true. you know, it 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 just puts doing things that that push you to do something better than you've ever done before will enable you to be able to achieve results that you just didn't believe was possible. And that's one of the exactly. things that I love seeing in people. And you'd be the same, you're working with somebody and then you see that they've just, you know, they've, they've had their light, they're allowed to have their light shine and it shines within them, doesn't it? Yeah. And especially a lot of people uh, probably will think, oh, I wish I met you uh, 10 years ago. Mm. And the truth is, if you met me 10 years ago, you're probably not ready for what I'm going to teach you. We all have our timing. We all have our space that we know that that is the moment I am going to decide to change. That conscious decision is always inside of us if I wanted to do something. Like going back to the, anal the analogy that I need to turn that frame a little bit towards uh, like more straighter, even that I've been looking at it for 10 years. And not until that mm. one day I say I decided I'm going to make that difference. And that's what's when it's going to change. So to all the listeners out there, there's never a time that you say, oh, I'm maybe too late. I'm beyond help. No one can teach me anymore. There's never too late as long as you believe and you put in the commitment into it and say, I am ready for this next step. That's mm -hmm. when everything will start rolling. And changes is not a one-day thing. It is a progress. It is a strategy. It is a planning. But what is good about working with a coach is to help you, to guide you and to shine the path for you so you can take the initiative to walk it. We can't walk the journey for them. We mm. can't. We seem, we love you to death, but we simply cannot. But we can guide you to go where you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. well well said on that point. And and the important, and this is the another thing, important part about getting a coach. I have a, a, a golf coach, golf pro that I work with, and I, when I first started playing golf, I went and did ladies' clinic lessons with a golf pro. So when I first started, I learned to swing well because I had to grip the club well, had to swing well. And over time, things change. So you get a better coach who can take you to that next level. And so, But the basics are there because I got the basics right from the beginning from a coach rather than fiddling around for 10 years myself trying to, mm. well, I wonder how I should stand when I'm doing a putt or, or yeah. how, I got, how am I going to hit this ball, how far am I going to hit it, which, you know, all of that because you get the base stuff done. And, and it's one of the reasons I love working with people, but it, they do frustrate me sometimes when they go, oh, I'm, they just stumble through it for five years and you know not really getting anything and still have this hobby business rather than something that is very real and worthwhile because they haven't got the the right base to start with and then they don't know how to get the right people to help them at the right time and exactly. and no matter what the coaches are doing what whatever it is you want to learn that continual learning and then you get more confident 
Yeah. And I have to say, every single culture is out there, they will teach you something and that will be successful for a certain type of people. You just got to find the person that aligns with you, who mm. actually speak your language, who is willing to listen to you instead of putting their projection and their ideas into you. I think mm. that is quite an important thing for all of us to realize that every single program out there work, but what works best for you? That is mm. what you need. But that's the right question to ask because I know a lot of us who are oh, looking into self-development or looking into business coaching or anything to do to help ourselves better. There is so many out there. There's millions of courses, millions of ways that we can, they all promise something. But instead of looking at what they promise, first question to ask is what do you want? What mm. do you want out of this relationship? What do you want out of this investment? Remember, it is an investment. You are putting in your time. You are putting in your effort. And not to say you do have to pay for it as well. So every single thing that you're doing is an investment. Take the emotion out when you're making a logical decision. That's what will help you to make the right decision. Oh, she looks so nice. She's so kind. I had a talk with her. She's so nice. But she doesn't understand what or how to run a social media business then why do I hire her as a social media manager? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't work. So always come back into your core. It's not about being a bitch. And it's not about being the bad person. It's just about asking you, what do you want? What do I need? And how am I going to get it? It's mm. very, very, very logic in the business world. Yeah, yeah. And that ju just makes so much, so much sense mm. on that. I love meeting up with these 22-year-old life coaches. Yeah. <gasps> Well, it might be good for a 16-year-old. It actually probably yeah, would yeah. be good for a 16-year-old because of that journey that they've gone through to be able yeah. to to help them. And, again, it is important to align with people with the same values and and, this, and that connection with them. I look, usually at the beginning of the interview, I ask the uh, my guest, my, my beautiful guest, why did you get into this? And I, I missed that point. And I, I really want to understand what got you into wanting to help people improve their confidence level, Martha? Because I was the great pretender. I was someone who was very successful on the outside, running my own business since the age of 26. I run an international makeup business. I travel all around the world to do makeup for people. I was just a makeup artist, but my ex-husband used to say that I earn more than a prostitute. So that's why they're an ex. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're an ex. And there you go. So on the outside. I would have gone, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, mm, okay, like that's a funny thing for me to say now, isn't it? <laughs> Quite fun. But uh, then people were like, what? What, what is she talking about? Yeah, <laughs> yep, that's exactly what he said to me. But the funny thing was, like, on the outside, I was great. I was on a like international um, beauty expos and things like that. I win uh, competition. I'm judging makeup competition. Everyone on the outside think that, oh my God, she's confident. She's happy. She got this bright smile. That was the outside me. On the inside, they don't know all I had was a cat that at home, I hold on to her and cry under four, four walls. I hardly step out of my, live, my my bedroom. We sleep apart for about five years. There's no intimacy, no caring, but I was the one paying for all the bills for over 10 years. That was my life. No one knows about it. Not until on my 40th birthday, I asked myself, what do I want in life? I, only, I was so depressed at that time that I only want to live up to 60 years old. I said that that will be enough because I experience luxury. I travel uh, in some part of the great world. I eat the best thing. I have the most limited edition handbag. I had enough in my life already. And my life was so sad that I can't see anything more than 60 years old. I would say that my life would be enough. So I said to myself, what do I want on my 40th episode birthday? I said, I want to be happy and I want to find a person that will treasure me and love me for who I am, not who I cannot be. So I don't, I cannot be this quiet woman that will not have a voice. I will not be this person that will get hit all the time and not fight back. So I need to choose a different life. Mm -hmm. So I choose to go out for my divorce. And 
about a year and a half later went into my dating journey it was like you know online dating because like, I don't go to club I don't drink much so it was really hard for me to blow for like some people and I was 40 years old 16 size 16 not small Asian doesn't have big eyes and I like, short hair too so very <laughs> not your you described it well for the listeners on the podcast yeah. who don't watch, they watch the video so, on YouTube <laughs> So it's it's like, oh, like, you know, who the hell am I to find a nice person? But yeah. guess what? I have no shortages of candidates to who wants to put in the application form to see me. So that was actually very good in building up my confidence. And until I found my current partner, he is also uh doing personal development as well. And he even though he's a Navy, he's always not here. He understands the importance of space and respect. And that helped me to come out of my shell. I start sharing my story of my childhood, where I've been bullied since the age of six. I could have no one in the school talking to me. For three years, I was sitting alone in the canteen all by myself, and no one cared about. So all, and I was too scared to tell my parents anything about it because they have their life, they're busy, they they care for me, but. I was not close to them enough to be able to share anything with them. Even the fact that I was sexually molested by one of our relatives. Every single year, we go and visit them for Chinese New Year, and he would pull me into a room that I didn't know that was the wrong thing to do. And mm -hmm. I blocked that out in my mind for so, so long until that my partner have encouraged me to share my story to the world. When I first come out, this is about confidence, and I, I am a true introvert before. No one actually knows what my story was. So when I have to speak up and let people know, I felt like I was in Miami on a stage with a, with two spotlights shining at my butt crack. Basically, that's how I felt like. It was so, so scary. Not until I realized, hey, I don't need to take everything off at once. I can take it layer by layer until I'm fully comfortable. And that's how I build up my confidence. And in that journey, I have inspired many women to say, hey, now that I have heard your story, I know that I can be different as well. Mm -hmm. I do not need to be staying in that own trauma of my life. Um, I, when I was doing NLP, this was a, you have probably heard of a timeline therapy. Yeah, I do that. Yeah. Yeah. And in timeline therapy, it brought me back onto the first moment I experienced fear. And that moment was when my father used a knife to step on my hand. All I can see is my vein was green and blue and my blood was deep red. That was the memory and the first time I experienced What, what happened? It was just because I was naughty and he was trying to teach me a lesson and then used a kitchen knife and step on my hand. I still have the mark to actually prove it. And and that was how Asian culture was. Doesn't mean he doesn't love me. Doesn't mean yeah. that I don't love him. But that was how you're supposed to teach a kid with their naughty. I got a nickname. My nickname was Naughty Maha. That was my nickname when I was small. All my uncles still call me that and they have no idea. Now they meet me now, like I'm 44 this year. So when they met me now, it's like, how did Martha turn out to be like this? She's polite, she's respectable and she's kind. She was never like that when she was young. <laughs> <laughs> so we all have our own journey into it. And, it. and now that I'm looking back into it, why was I so naughty? Because I wasn't feeling love. I wasn't feeling attention. And why did I pray for love so much that I got married when I was 21? Because I was fearful of being alone. Why did I not get out of a marriage that was cost me 19 years of my life? Because I was afraid of dying alone. Mm -hmm. It was better than have a housemate than nothing at all. That was my fear. So once I come into terms, into this scariness, what I'm truly afraid of, Learning that vulnerability is actually beautiful. It's not a weakness. Being able to ask for help is only a sign of strength and bravery. Wow, that completely changed me. Mm. I used to be this tough woman that the world expect me to be, putting up my hands and just fight for the world myself. I feel like Wonder Woman every single day. And I forgot to take the Wonder Woman suit off and give myself some time to care for myself and love for mm -hmm. myself. I still remember the first person to tell me to have more self-love. I actually tell him to F off. 
I did. But, yeah, I've been it's really, really challenged you. Yeah, <laughs> it has because I thought I have the most luxurious handbag. I need the most beautiful fine dining. Who the hell are you telling me that I do not have self love? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't. I that was emotional eating. I didn't know. Mm. I didn't know that was just me frustrating. So I spent all the money that I have. There you go. That was yeah. my life. And being able to admit on that, that was a big change for me. So for all of us out there, start by acknowledging what have happened. Doesn't yeah. matter what the trauma is. Acknowledgement is the first step to go before being aware of what your needs are. Mm. Then go and look for the path that you need to go into. Work with a coach to find you again. That's how I find myself as well. Mm, that's wonderful. And it's it's so important that people learn, have the capacity to to tell their stories. I can't believe that we are nearly out of time. We have three <laughs> takeaway points that we always, you know, gift out. Even though we talk about so many wonderful points throughout, mm-hmm. uh, there are three takeaways that you're thinking of that you'd like people to remember in particular and may, apply maybe. The first one is you do not need to be perfect to be confident. You are completely okay being just you. The second step is that never be afraid to ask. If you don't ask, you will never get. I got my poached eggs. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And the third thing is remember you are allowed to ask and have a voice, but you must do it with respect. Because no yeah. one will respect out the other person when they're not being respectful. So if you want the same thing in return, always do it with respect. Mm. Uh, yeah, three very, very good points. So first one is nobody's nobody's perfect. So expecting per- perfection is a little bit crazy if we're mm. not perfect. And have a voice, like own your voice. And then the third one, I, I, allow you to have that voice but do it with respect Mm. how can people get in touch with you or find you martha i am of course all social media if you search super confident coach i'm the first one to come up on google or search for martha malt you'll be able to find me wonderful and we'll have all of the contact details in the show notes as, Mm. as well is there anything that you want to add before we wrap up i never need to be afraid of reaching out to another person but I do want you to know that I want your commitment as well because when you are committed that's when you're starting to change and the change is not for me you're not changing for anyone else you're changing because you want to be better so always give yourself that permission and acknowledging what's going on around you and your possibility of change will come Absolutely. And that's a great way to finish there. Thank you very much, Martha, for being on the We Are Women podcast. It's been a wonderful conversation. It's always gone very quickly, as it as it always does. And uh, Janine Bosper here signing off from this episode. Remember to go to janinebosper.com if you want to book a, a coaching call or just to have a strategy call and chat about how you might make changes in your life to gain more confidence or any other skill base. And if I can't help you, I have got the most amazing list of wonderful guests that I've had on my show and connections who I will be able to direct you to the right person to help you with the with whatever's happening in your life and business. Have a wonderful time until the next episode of the We Are Women podcast. Bye-bye for now. So, do you feel stuck in a rut in business? Visit speechperfect.com.au and download Janine's free ebook to avoid the five most common stumbling blocks women face in business. It's jam-packed full of tips to overcome the barriers that could be holding you back from the success that you dream your business will be. We would love you to leave a review of today's episode and share this podcast with other women in need of entrepreneurial inspiration. Subscribe to the next episode now and join the We Are Women community.